ghosts. I love them, you love them, Zach Bagans really loves them. I'm about to open up a haunted museum. Ghosts are a huge icon of Halloween. When you think of Halloween, you think of ghosts along with a couple of other symbols. And it's been that way for a really long time and thus we've seen so many different styles of ghosts throughout the decades. We have ghosts that are literally just a bed sheet with two eyes. We have ghosts with feet and legs. We have ghosts that are just literal blobs. Mm -hmm. They're just a circle. And while this sparks debate amongst all of us Halloween lovers on what the cutest ghost is and what features we do and don't like, I think what it really does is just show that we all have preferences and different features that we find cute or we find spooky. So with that being said, this year I was looking, I was so excited for what ghost decor I would be seeing in the stores. And let me tell you, I was disappointed, to say the least. At least with the pillows slash plushies. Who wants a hairy ghost? No. Ugh. Why is the forehead so big? They either had a weird body or a really ugly face. And I just knew looking at these, I could make something better. Flashback. You guys, I'm gonna make my own ghost pillow. I'm doing it. So I'm going to try to incorporate a couple of different styles and have like, fun little details, but also keeping him blobular and shaped like a pillow because that's the whole point. So my first initial idea was to just go for like the ghost that I usually draw, which is essentially just an oval-ish on the top and then cut in half, almost like a Pac-Man ghost. And then maybe he has like little arms and he's reaching up and we have like the classic O mouth. So that's like a rough idea for one of them. And then other option, I definitely want to do like some sort of tail. So having that round head, I just, I don't know, I kind of like the arms up. I think that's the only option for me because it signifies that he's like flying and that he's like, boo, he's like trying to scare you. So I think we're gonna have the arms up cons consistently. That's cute. We should definitely do, for the last one, have some kind of like little cap, like where the, the cloth is the hat. So, well, that's kind of cute. Maybe this is the moaning one. Okay, he's cute. I also just drew those eyes really sloppily, but I kind of like that they look sad. It kind of fits with like the moaning mouth. I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this so far. A little later. I did some final sketches in Procreate and then I brought it into Photoshop to just add a little bit of color and stuff. And here are the final sketches. So we have option one, option two, and then option three. I love them all so much. I think they're so stinking cute. 
any of these I would love to have as a plushie. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna export these and then post them in the community tab and see what you guys think. You all voted and the best man won. So without further ado, let's get to making him. Mm. I had to be on theme today. First things first, with this project, we're going to need two pieces of paper. One piece of paper will not suffice because we want this pillow to be on the bigger side. So I'm going to get two pieces of paper, tape them together, and it's totally fine that there's gonna be a little seam down the middle. I'm going to use this pillow as just kind of a reference to get a guess of the size that I'm going for for this pillow. And then once I get a general estimate, I'm gonna get my ruler out and mark down actual measurements based on my drawings. After I've marked the measurements on the paper, I'm going to do a very rough sketch of the shape of my pillow. This is gonna be very rough, just kind of getting the overall shape and size of our ghost. And of course, making lots of tweaks, erasing a ton, it's all part of the process. And then I'm just gonna finalize those lines with some thicker pencil lines before I go through with my Sharpie. Then I get that Sharpie out and I just lay down those thick black lines. And that just makes it easier for me to find it with the scissors. Once those lines are laid down, we're gonna do a very rough cut just to get rid of the excess paper. Next, we're gonna get our ruler and we're gonna measure right down the center of the template and use the ruler's hard edge to fold it in half. And we're gonna do this because this is how we're going to make sure that those arms and the head are completely identical. So once we have folded it right down the center, I'm going to cut it that way. And then when I make my way to that hip area right before the tail, I'm going to stop and then unfold him and cut the rest of the template out. And as you can see, there's some unevenness there that was created due to me not drawing both arms exactly the same. So I'm just gonna correct that by drawing some extended lines and cutting that out. And from the back, it looks absolutely perfect and even. So, I folded the guy in half. Here he is. As you can see, there's a little bit of, you know, inconsistency right here, just because he wasn't, I didn't draw him perfectly even, which I wish I had that talent. But, so we're gonna be going with this shape. And I feel like this is a pretty good size for a nice pillow. I kind of, as you saw in the video, I compared him to this pumpkin pillow that I got from Target. And that's kind of like what I'm going for. I don't want it to be too small, but of course not too big because that just makes shipping more and more complicated. So I felt like this was a nice size. So here we are. Here's a little photo that I took of the cutout on my husband's couch that he has in his office. And I'm thinking that that looks, looks pretty good and that's gonna really pop. Now that we have this cut out, we're gonna move to the fabric part. We're gonna get that fabric out and we're going to pin him down and cut him out. And 
we're going to, you know, make sure that we round out the line on the fabric just to make sure that like this isn't too pinched together and that it's nice and like a nice beveled edge. We're gonna do that twice. And there you have it. You have your two ghost pieces. So let's get to it. It's cloth time. We're gonna get that cloth out, lay it down. We're gonna first cut a square out in the relative shape of the ghost, just so that it's easier to cut him out. And then we're gonna pin that bad boy down. I was trying to shove this through the paper and I was like, why is this not going through? And it's because it doesn't have a point. Aww. There's no point on this pin. It's like, it got like broke off or something. Life is pointless and nothing matters and I'm always tired. Once we have him all pinned down, we're going to use a lighter color marker because I figured it'd be better than using a black Sharpie. We're gonna trace a little bit of a distance around the ghost so we can get that nice beveled edge. We're going to try to cut as smooth as possible, but he's going to be flipped inside out, so it doesn't really matter a ton. But then the light pink marker you chose to use decided to get all over your hands and the table. I was thinking that this pink pen would be better than the Sharpie, but apparently this little pen just wants to get everywhere. Um, so that's fun. I regret everything, but that's fine. Uh, it's not gonna matter because I'm going to double him up in layers so no one is gonna see these lines. But I thought that the pink would be better than a harsh black line. I... If you have any like recommendations for markers for fabric, please let me know because I don't really know what else to do. <laughs> Now we're gonna cut out the remaining pieces that we need from our fabric. A little tip that the fabric store lady kindly bestowed upon me is when you're using fabrics with like a texture on it, like the one I'm using, which is a fleece or a velvet or whatever, make sure that the pattern is going the same direction or the direction that you want. So I had to make sure with this fleece that I was using the right side of the fleece because one side of it was more pressed down and the other side was definitely more of a fluffier texture. The same goes with the felt. The one side of the felt was very pressed down and the other side was more soft. So if I were to cut out the eyes on different sides, they would have looked different on the ghost. So just be aware that if you're doing a plushie or a pillow where there's a front and a back, you're going to have to mirror it. Okay, so we have the face cut out. Now we're going to move on to stitching the face onto the top layer of him. This is going to take a while. So I highly doubt I'm going to finish in one night, but here's a fun time-lapse of me doing little intricate billion stitches. <laughs> One eternity later. Okay, you guys, I have one eye. One eye done. So moving on to the next one, I have high doubts I'm gonna get this video out on Friday, but we're, we're gonna see. We're gonna see if we can make some magic happen. So we have two eyes complete. I have been sewing all day, 
I am tired. My eyeballs are going to explode, but we are ready to move on to the mouth and the eyes are looking great. I'm really happy with all the stitching. I removed <laughs> as many nails as I could because I was terrified of like food getting like under them because I get, you know, I have to clean under my nails and stuff since they're long. I was terrified of food getting under them and then me touching this white pristine cloth and getting a stain on it. So I was like, I should probably take these off and give my nails a breather anyway, but I couldn't get these three off. <laughs> but anyway, it's going great. I'm just gonna continue watching Halloween Town. I'm on Halloween Town High and I need to find out what happens with the nights. Good morning. So this little guy has taken a little longer, a little longer than anticipated, but he is looking great. Last night I was able to kind of put the finishing touches on just the stitching around his mouth and his eyes looking for any like sparse areas and I think I got them all. I mean, before I send him out, I'm sure I'll do one last look. Yeah, I found one, I already found one. Regardless, the vast majority of him is looking nicely stitched. So to keep my hands from falling off, um, I was like, I'm gonna take a break from that do a little bit of like Halloween hunting and then come back and then I will stitch him in the morning. So that is why there was a delay. It was just, oh, I was up so late yesterday <laughs> and my fingers were like, please, please stop. So I took a little break, but I am ready and I am so freaking excited. Let's get to stitching this little cutie together. Happy Saturday. Here is our little baby boy ghost. He is all stitched together. I got that face done, even though that took me like two full days and lots of hand exercises that I had to do, but it was worth it because he is looking snatched. He is looking super cute. This actually stitching him together wasn't that bad. It actually didn't take as long as I anticipated. I was very careful to focus on where I was putting the lines so that he didn't come out all bumpy. Th there were parts of Oogie that were a little uneven. 
which kind of was fine because he's Oogie, he's a sack. So I didn't think anyone would even care or notice. But with this, this is supposed to be a clean ghost. We didn't want a bumpy ghost. So I was very careful. I'm hoping, you know, anything can happen. It When you're stitching and making something by hand, imperfections are just kind of a part of it. So I'm crossing my fingers that it's very minimal and that it looks perfect, but we're just gonna roll with it. So I have just this little pocket here and we're gonna flip him inside out. And I feel like we should just, let's just do it here because why not? Okay. I'm always like the most nervous about the tail because it's such a small area that you're stitching together. Okay, that's looking good. We're looking good, guys. Um, I watched Casper for the first time in a long time. Like, I have not seen that movie in a hot minute. And Christina Ricci is just so darling. She was such a spooky star back then. She was in so many beloved spooky movies. Ugh. And I'm so happy that she made an appearance in Wednesday. I thought that was really fun. Ooh, okay, we have a head. We have an arm. Everything is looking cutie patootie. Oh my God, look at him. Oh, he's so stinking cute. The tail came out so good. You guys, I focused really hard when I was stitching, okay? You should be proud of me. I was really focusing and not just like, you know, I was like every stitch, I was like making sure. And I think this reflects that. I am not seeing a single thread that looks weird. The seams are looking fantastic and I'm so excited to get stuffing in this boy. So let's, let's not wait. Let's stuff him. And then we're gonna stitch him closed and that'll be it. If you wanna know where all this fluff came from, you don't. I'm sorry, Oogie. I am sorry. Five five Sacrifices were made today. <laughs> when you're stuffing a plushie, it's pretty hard to get them absolutely smooth with no clumps. But I did read online that if you spread the stuffing in between your fingers and just kind of pull it apart and fluff it up a little bit and stuff it into the corners of the plushie, that that should minimize clumps and, and help significantly. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this little creepy craft adventure. I love the empowerment it brings when I see something in stores and I'm like, no, I would do this different or why aren't they doing this? And then being like, I can make that. I can make that happen. That's something that I am capable of. I know how to do it. And even if I didn't, Let's figure it out. And I think that's really cool. And I love seeing more and more artists do that. I had so much fun making this guy. I thought he was just so cute from start to finish. I love how he turned out. I love just 
his cute little face and like, would I fix a couple of things about him? Yes, because that's just what it's like being an artist. You're, you're always going to want to tweak things, but at the end of the day, I only gave myself so much time for this and this is what my poor little hands could muster. And overall, I am I am very pleased with how he turned out. Part of me wants to keep him for myself, but I'm so grateful for all of you being here and just supporting and commenting. Not, not just watching, but commenting on my videos. I love reading all of your comments. They make me so happy. I love you sharing things that you have found, a memory you have of Halloween, whatever it is. I, I love it. It makes me feel like we're all part of a community and we all have a common interest. So I am so stoked to give this to one of you guys. So to put your name in the running for this little contest, all you have to do is be subscribed and then leave me a comment. You can like as well if you want, you know, no big deal. But leave me a comment on what your favorite thing about Halloween is. It can be literally anything. Um, even if you say what I like about Halloween is nothing, I'm still gonna add your name into the bucket. So I don't know why you would want him if you didn't like Halloween, but Fair is fair, I guess. And then I'm going to pick at random. I'm not gonna pick someone I like. It's gonna be completely random. And then I'm gonna contact you through social, get your details, and send this little guy on his way. <laughs> I can't wait to see who gets him. I'm so excited. And then whenever I do choose someone, I will be sure to post about it in the community tab so that you're not wondering, like, you know, did she choose someone yet? You know, I'll, I'll be sure to leave, leave a post in the community tab, but I'm so excited to read your comments. I hope that you had so much fun watching this video as much as I did, and I hope that it inspired you to create something that you are not seeing in the world. And I highly encourage you to, to do that. If, if you're not seeing something that you want, try making it if, if possible. And it's probably going to not be that great the first time around, and that's okay. You gotta keep working that muscle and eventually you'll create something that's that really surprises you. Stay spooky, my cute and creepy friends. I will see you guys in the next video and happy Halloween hunting.